good morning everyone so we already discussed the technique of uh, pancreatotomy in the lecture which dr ajay sharma took and beautifully illustrated the steps and then in the two sessions where neha presented and dr sitaram discussed uh, so today we are going to take that discussion further um, this uh, is a picture uh, when i was attending the ihpba in geneva and i saw this uh, uh, restaurant uh, i think uh, i didn't find out but uh, i'm sure it was owned by a surgeon because it says master of complications um, surgeon like me who always thinks of the complications of a procedure first before talking about the results so today we will uh, discuss what are the complications of uh, pancreatotomy now as uh, harold ellis said that uh, pancreas is an organ which is not to be messed up by the surgeons uh, but uh, we all do it day in and day out but uh, in my opinion pancreas is one of the few organs in the body the others being esophagus duodenum ureter uh, collaterals of portal hypertension presacral plexus of veins and uh, periprostatic plexus of veins and pancreas which uh, any and every surgeon should be very uh, respectful to and uh, very careful about the complications of pd the specific complications of pd are actually related to one its anatomy uh, because there are very important vessels around the pancreas uh, the celiac and its uh, branches superior mesenteric and portal and uh, uh, some anomalies like the aberrant uh, uh, right hepatic artery which may be either accessory or uh, replaced and its uh, relations uh, to these important vessels and very importantly the physiology of pancreas the pancreatic juice which as we know that once it comes out of the uh, uh, pancreas or the gi tract causes lot of uh, damage so here uh, uh we are showing a uh, origin of the right hepatic artery from the sma this is an sma angiogram and here you see the right hepatic artery which is lying uh, to the right of the paired portal vein the cbd has already been uh, divided a uh, world over even in large high volume centers uh, which do uh, uh, maybe hundreds of pds every year the mortality has come down the acceptable mortality today is 5% uh, less than 5% there are centers which have reported uh, even 1 or 2% mortality in large series there are several publications uh, which report more than 100 consecutive pds without a mortality but i haven't yet seen a report of more than 200 consecutive pds that means after 100 one patient died otherwise they would have reported 200 also Uh, but the the complications of uh, pd still remain high they remain in the tune of 30 to 50% so uh, the complication rate has not decreased only the salvage from complications has uh, uh, become better and that is why the mortality has been brought down the complications could be general like of any other operation or any other major operation but uh, we are going to talk about the specific complications of pd which could be intraoperative post operative and the leak could be usually pancreatic but since we know that there are two other anastomoses it could be from other anastomoses also if time permits we will discuss them otherwise i will confine the discussion to pancreatic leak only a word about preparation it's very important to prepare these patients as dr sitaram also pointed out when neha was presenting uh, so uh, more and more countries are now recommending and following that pd should be done in high volume centers so referral and centralization is important uh, most of these patients are uh, middle age or elderly they may have comorbidities they should be looked into and patient should be optimized time uh, should be taken uh, to do that and that may be an indication for stenting if you need time to optimize the comorbidities nutritional status uh, of the patient if compromised needs to be improved chest antibiotics stvt prophylaxis and all other usual measures uh, but i put a question mark before pre operative biliary drainage i think that's a separate topic uh, in itself anand has covered it in one of the uh, previous sessions maybe we will have a discussion once again that uh, what are the indications for pre operative biliary drainage 
Now coming to the intraoperative uh, complications, the most common or most uh, uh, important intraoperative complication besides injury to adjacent structures, and many of these structures are actually vascular structures. So again, the complication is bleeding, and bleeding in PD can occur at several steps. Uh, cholecystectomy in PD is always more messy than a simple cholecystectomy in gallstone disease. These gallbladders are uh, uh, distended, they are more vascular, the GB bed usually bleeds much more than what we anticipate in a otherwise cholecystectomy. The peri and epicholidocal veins, again, uh, because of biliary obstruction, uh, they are uh, uh, larger, probably more in number as compared to normal uh, veins when we divide CBD for any other reason. The gastrocolic trunk, which is formed by the anterior superior pancreatic or duodenal vein, the right gastroepiploic vein, and a branch, a tributary of the middle colic vein um, is uh, uh, encountered as we open the lesser sac in front of the head of the pancreas to expose the uh, head of the pancreas, and it has to be taken care of. Otherwise, it causes unnecessary uh, bleeding. The posterior superior pancreatic overduodenal vein, which joins the portal vein, and it usually comes at the last of the uh, specimen resection, or it comes when we are mobilizing the CBD, and at that point, uh, it may be encountered. And if it uh, any of these uh, pancreatic overduodenal veins, posterior or an, uh, anterior, superior or inferior, they are draining directly into the portal vein. So if they evolve from the portal vein, it becomes like a hole in the portal vein which uh, not only results in a large amount of bleeding, but is uh, difficult to control unless you are prepared for it. Similarly, uncinate veins, which drain directly into the superior mesenteric vein, the jejunal veins also, the veins in the jejunal mesentery, especially the mesentery is fat laden, uh, may cause unnecessary bleeding. And there are two techniques of uh, handling the jejunal mesentery. Uh, some people now with energy sources would prefer to go as close to the bowel so that Though you encounter multiple veins, but they are small veins and they can easily be taken with harmonic uh, or ligature. On the other hand, some people would go uh, to nearer to the base of the mesentery because then the number of vessels which you have to take is smaller, but you should be very careful that you don't go very close to the main superior mesentery vessels. Most people would prefer to go along the bowel. Obviously, the cut surface of pancreas can bleed depending on whether you do a cold cut with a knife, then it is more likely to bleed. Many people prefer to do that because they feel any energy source on the pancreas uh, is not uh, recommended because it compromises the vascularity of the stump. Um, most of us would divide the pancreas with harmonic. Only disadvantage of harmonic is that it may occlude a small duct, an undilated duct. So uh, if you are using harmonic to divide the pancreas, then near the part where you anticipate the duct to be present, which is more close to the posterior surface and more close to the anterior border of the pancreas, you should preferably use a knife. Then the entire bed of the PD specimen can bleed, especially in a patient with coagulopathy, patient with jaundice who has not been stented. Momentum is a very uh, uh, not uncommon uh, site of bleed, which gets ignored because we tuck the omentum away to some corner and it continues to bleed and it should be carefully looked into. And last, when we place the drains, especially when you are placing uh, 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 a large size drain, you can cause injury to one of the parietal vessels which bleeds and can be overlooked. So here I'm showing the dissection of a pancreatic or duodenal vein. Uh, these are the veins which uh, 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 run uh, from the uh, medial border of the duodenum to the pancreas. So some tips for uh, 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 preventing or avoiding uh, these bleeds that uh, uh, you should be ready with vascular clamps and sutures in case uh, uh, you have to tackle uh, one of the uh, larger veins like SMV or portal vein where a hole has been caused. Uh, even small veins, you should uh, preferably ligate and divide. You can take them in with energy source also. Uh, but uh, a proper energy source should be used. And arteries, named arteries at least, should be ligated and transfixed, or you ligate and put a clip to be more secure. Hemostasis, placement of drains and tubes like nasojejunal tube, drain, all this should be done before the reconstruction is begun. This is very important because once you have done the reconstruction and then you try to manipulate tubes and drains or you 
uh, uh, try to do some hemostasis where you had earlier pack, it will put unnecessary traction on the anastomosis and uh, may cause uh, their uh, disruption. So all hemostasis placement of drains, unless it is an anteriorly placed drain, which obviously will have to be put after the reconstruction, all this should be done uh, preferably early. Now, intraoperative intraluminal bleed, I'm just illustrating an example. This is a patient where we've already done the BJ, and then when we were about to start the EDJ, in fact, we had already completed the posterior layer of EDJ, we saw fresh red blood coming out of the stoma site where we were supposed to do the EDJ. So what does this mean? This means that the pancreatic stump is bleeding. In this case, it was not a mucosa to mucosa anastomosis, it was a dunking, which means that the entire gland has been anastomosed to a large opening in the duodenum because the duct was not dilated. Uh, so uh, that means that the cut surface of the pancreas is bleeding and therefore immediately we opened the anterior layer of the PJ, controlled the bleed from the cut surface of pancreas and then redid the anterior layer of PJ. So unusual, but uh, 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 a cause of intraoperative intraluminal bleed from the cut surface of the pancreas. Now, obviously, in the post-operative complications, the most important and the most uh, dangerous or uh, fatal or lethal uh, complication is, uh, is uh, leak, uh, which is known as pancreatic anastomotic failure. And in case of distal pancreatectomy, it will be caused, called pancreatic occlusion failure. And uh, the International Study Group for Pancreatic Fistula has defined it. Uh, and now uh, we say, that A is the biochemical leak in the new classification as uh, Neha had discussed and uh, uh, B and C. Uh, so B and C are the ones which are clinically important and all databases should record B and C uh, leaks following PD. You can predict the leak because there are certain factors which uh, uh, caution you that in this case, you are going to have a leak. Patients who are old, uh, who have obesity because then the pancreatic fat component also is more sutures may not hold as well as in a thin built patient who doesn't have much uh, visceral fat. Uh, soft pancreas and undilated duct, these are the two most important factors to predict a uh, leak. Uh, leak is more in cancer as compared to chronic pancreatitis because in CP the gland is firm, uh, secretions are also not uh, much and they are less in enzyme levels. Amongst the cancers also, uh, uh, duodenal uh, cancers, uh, periampillary cancers, they are more likely to have uh, soft pancreas and undilated duct. Uh, Preoperative biliary drainage uh, uh, and uh, NACRT. Preoperative biliary drainage, in a nutshell, I can say that if the system is drained and jaundice is brought down, then bleeding complications are less, but infective complications increase. Uh, if you use NACRT, that means you give radiation also, then the, there are some reports which show that the leak rates are less. Um, longer operating time, more blood loss, intraoperative hypotension, like in any other anastomosis, intraoperative significant persistent hypotension requiring inotropic support is a very high risk predictor for anastomotic leak. And in fact, in such a situation, if it happens, you may think of not doing the pancreatic anastomosis, but exteriorizing it for a later reconstruction. And hospital volume, of course, uh, accounts for morbidity as well as mortality. Uh, some steps which can reduce the chances of leak, I already mentioned NACRT, but obviously you will not give radiation for that reason. That is just a bonus or byproduct of uh, using new adjuvant radiotherapy. Chemodynamics is very important. Uh, there are some reports which say that uh, uh, a little bit of underhydration of the patient, even using hypertonic saline, may help uh, maintaining good vascularity of the stump, which means that you don't mobilize it uh, uh, too much. On the other hand, if you are using the Banks technique, then you have to perforce mobilize three centimeter of pancreas. So there is a lot of debate on this. Strasberg says that don't mobilize the pancreas at all and just divide it. Uh, which technique you use? There are some reports which suggest that use of magnification for doing pancreatic anastomosis, especially if the duct is not dilated, helps. And stent use, uh, whether to use it, 
whether uh, it should come out or remain internal is a very debatable, very controversial point. As one surgeon has said, that if the duct is dilated, you don't need a stent. If the duct is not dilated, then uh, 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 the stent will be harmful. Use of isolated loop, not very popular, but theoretically sounds uh, good because if the leak occurs, then it will be a pure pancreatic leak with less disastrous consequences, and it doesn't interfere with the enteral uh, nutrition of the patient. Uh, as I said, in extreme situations, exteriorization of the duct, either directly or through a loop of jejunum, which has been just tucked to the cut surface of the pancreas so that the tube comes out through the jejunum or at least through a fomental flap. Uh, ligation of the duct and glue obliteration, not very popular today. And total pancreatectomy also, um, unless uh, you are re-exploring for a very uh, problematic leak and uh, you think that nothing else would work, but not many people today would do a total pancreatectomy as a treatment of uh, leak. So uh, this study, uh, and I'm, there are many more after this, uh, which show that a day one drain fluid amylase level uh, is a very good predictor of uh, leak. In fact, if the day one brain fluid amylase is less than 100, then uh, the chances that leak would occur are uh, very low. Uh, this helps in uh, deciding the threshold for CT. So if day one fluid amylase is high, you know that chances of leak are high. So if the patient is not doing well, if the vitals are unstable, if there is metabolic derangement, if the abdomen is not settled, feeds are not being tolerated, you have a very low threshold for a CT because then there is a very high chance that there is a leak and a collection. The management of leak, high degree of suspicion, as I mentioned, brain fluid amylase, and a very low threshold for CT. There is nothing else which can diagnose uh, uh, leak. Actually, it's not the leak which is important. It is the collection. Even if there is a leak and your drains are working well and there is no collection, no harm is done. What you are looking for is a collection and therefore a CT scan, because if there is a collection, then it has to be drained. Because if you don't drain the collection, it is very likely to get infected. It will form an abscess. That abscess will further erode into the same anastomosis. So maybe the initial leak is small, but if the abscess forms around the site of the anastomosis, then the whole anastomosis will get disrupted. And then the abscess will erode into the other anastomosis. And more importantly, it will erode into the vascular stumps. Even intact vessels can get eroded. And then you will have what I will discuss later, a delayed intra-abdominal bleed because leak occurs usually around three to five days and the consequences occur even later. So treatment is to drain the collection. And today, if you have good interventional radiology support, most of these collections can be drained uh, by a percutaneous catheter drain placement. If you have an anteriorly placed collection like this, then you just open the wound and uh, gentle finger manipulation and the whole collection will drain into the wound. Very rarely today, re-operation would be required for a pancreatic leak unless it is a major disruption of the anastomosis and uh, uh, multiple or multi-septate inaccessible collections or you don't have good interventional radiology support. If at all you have to re-operate for leak, the best treatment is to just drain. Expose the area, provide good lavage, drain all the collections and provide good drainage and uh, you may have to disconnect the anastomosis, close the jejunum. You can externally drain the pancreas. That means do a external pancreatic ostomy. As I said, either through a loop of jejunum, if it is possible to tuck it there. Although you should remember that no sutures will hold. And definitely a feeding jejunostomy if it was not done in the first instance. And this is the kind of picture you see as soon as you open an abdomen for a leak. Because this is around five days and uh, things are very bad no sutures will hold in this. And in most cases, no repair should be done because again and again, I'm saying sutures is, are very unlikely to hold. Now, next is PD bleed. PD bleed has been reported in about five to 9% of cases in some large series. Uh, uh, when I was at SGPGI, our experience was uh, slightly more than this. For some reason, we had more bleeds than what has been reported in the literature. And uh, uh, so again, ISGPS, uh, uh, so this is International Study Group on Pancreatic Surgery. 
they have uh, classified bleeds uh, depending on the time of onset, location, and severity. So I'll go in the reverse order. Severity, we all agree, uh, uh, mild and severe. Location, intraluminal or intraabdominal, which is extraluminal. Where I differ, and some other people also differ with ISGPS, is the classification into early and delayed. They say that anything beyond 24 hours is delayed, whereas many of us believe that even up to three days, some people say five days uh, bleed is an early bleed. Uh, and the importance of this is the causation, the etiology and the management, which I'll discuss later. A word about sentinel bleed, which is a small bleed, which stops on its own, but a major re-bleed occurs about 12 or 24 hours after this. And in one series, sentinel bleed was seen before a major bleed in as many as one out of three cases. So if you see a small amount of blood in the drain, uh, be cautious, be watchful, uh, keep again a low threshold for a CT angiogram. Some people would actually do a CT angiogram if they see a sentinel bleed because they feel that if you see a pseudoaneurysm, you can embolize it before it results in a major bleed. In fact, some people, uh, when they are doing a CT for a leak, would combine it with a CT angiogram because uh, then they say that if there is a pseudoaneurysm already, then they would like to embolize it because the leak is very likely to cause erosion of the pseudoaneurysm. Now, uh, so different types of bleeds, early intra-abdominal bleed, that is extra-luminal, which means you see blood in the drain or for some reason uh, uh, there is blood in the wound. And this is the most common cause is from the GDA stump, which has been, uh, which has got loose or the sutures have slipped or basically it's a technical mistake, but it could be any other vessel which you have ligated and divided. So it could be jejunal veins, omental veins, from the PD bed, especially in a patient with coagulopathy, jaundice, which was not stented, even cystic artery stump. So any vessel which you have ligated, divided, or used uh, energy source, if you were not careful, can be the cause of an early intra-abdominal bleed. And this is a surgical bleed. This is a technical bleed. And therefore, if the bleed is severe, according to the classification earlier, then the ideal treatment is re-operation. Now, I have mentioned pancreatic stump also here as the cause of early intra-abdominal bleed. Now, pancreatic stump should bleed into the lumen, but sometimes what happens when there is a large bleed, the jejunum distends, the sutures open, and a true early intra-luminal bleed may actually cause an associated intra-abdominal bleed. Also, if you've done a duct to mucosa anastomosis, and the cut surface is bleeding. Now this will disrupt the outer layer of the anastomosis and the pancreatic cut surface bleed because the jejunal opening is very small will manifest as intra-abdominal bleed. So early intra-abdominal bleed, if it is severe in intensity, it is a surgical bleed, it is a technical cause and the correction has to be surgical by re-operation. On the other hand, early intraluminal bleed is most likely from a GJ or DJ in a pylorus preserving PD. And the, the investigation or treatment of choice is upper GI endoscopy because now they can control this bleed with several measures which they have, sclerosant, adrenaline, clips, uh, energy source or whatever. Now, if it is not from GJ or DJ and you see blood coming in the jejunal loop from proximal, then obviously it is from the cut surface of pancreas. Now, if this has not caused disruption of the PJ, that means there is no intra-abdominal bleed as I described earlier. If it was a gland to mucosa bleed, that means the whole gland has been anastomosed to the jejunum, there is a large opening in the jejunum, then uh, now if it is a PJ bleed, the indication for re-operation is same if it is a severe bleed. And what you do at re-operation depends on what kind of anastomosis you had done. So if it was a pancreato jejunal, which means gland to uh, jejunum anastomosis, then what you can do, you make a jejunotomy parallel to the PJ and evacuate clot from the jejunum and control the bleed from the cut surface of pancreas through the jejunum. You don't have to open the anastomosis because the whole gland is seen inside the jejunum. On the other hand, if it was a duct to mucosa anastomosis like Blomgaard, then obviously if you do a jejunotomy, you will see only a small part of the pancreatic duct. You will not see the cut surface. So then you have to take down the anastomosis. Take down means you don't completely disrupt the anastomosis. You only take the anterior layer. 
expose the cut surface of pancreas, control the bleed, and because this is early, a first few days, and there is no leak, there is no sepsis, there is no inflammation of tissues, you can always redo the anastomosis. So this early intraluminal bleed is different from, as I will describe, late bleed where you cannot and should not do the re-anastomosis. So here you see the jejunum full of blood. There is no blood outside. So this is pure early intraluminal bleed. This will manifest as blood in the rice tube or melina or pollen hemoglobin and no blood in the drain. So we have opened the anastomosis, suture control of the bleed. That's the cut surface of the pancreas now. Posterior layer is still intact. This was a gland to jejunum anastomosis, what I call pancreatojejunal. If you do duct to mucosa, it is pancreaticojejunal. This is pancreatojejunal. And then because it is early, there is no inflammation, tissues are health, relatively healthy. We redid the anastomosis. Now, on the other hand, delayed intra-abdominal bleed. So manifestation is same, blood in the drain, blood in the wound, fallen hemoglobin, no blood in the rice tube, no melina. This is invariably because of a leak, forming a collection, becoming infected to form an abscess, eroding into the GDS dump and causing delayed intra-abdominal bleed. The diagnosis is by CT NGO, treatment is by embolization, in addition, if there is a collection, you do PCD. Reoperation is hardly ever required unless these measures are not available or are not successful. If you have to reoperate, the first op uh, priority is to control the bleed, which may be difficult because tissues are inflamed. This will usually occur after five, seven, 10 days. And uh, uh, tissues are very friable, very inflamed, very vascular. Uh, if the GDA stump is small, it will be very difficult to surgically control the bleed. And that is why many surgeons say that when you divide the GDA, you should leave a small stump, a few millimeter stump of the GDA, either for the radiologist or for yourself in case a bleed occurs. And treatment, as I said, is by coil embolization. Uh, this is one technique which when Dr. Ajay was with us in SGPGI, we started doing and we had reported it also. And there was a subsequent report in 2016. The initial publication which Ajay made was I think in 2004 or something. Uh, and uh, so we create a multiple vascularized flaps of momentum based on epiploic vessels. And one of the flaps is placed behind the pancreatic anastomosis. So you place the flap first then do the anastomosis, then bring the flap in front of the anastomosis. So the whole anastomosis is wrapped in a carpet of omental flap and other flaps are used for other anastomosis. And the hypothesis was that this will cover the GDS stump. <laughs> we thought it will decrease the leak rate also, which did not happen. But even if leak occurs, the bleed uh, may not occur. And that is what uh, we observed that even if leak occurs, uh, the stump is protected from the consequences of leak. Delayed intraluminal bleed, on the other hand, is invariably because of bleeding from uh, diffuse gastric erosions as a cause of, uh, as a result of uh, sepsis, which usually subsequent to a leak. Management is largely conservative and sometimes you may have to do some endoscopic control, but surgery probably has no role in uh, dealing with delayed intraluminal bleed. So in summary, the control of post-PD bleed, if it is delayed intraluminal, is largely conservative. It is from GJ, which is early intraluminal. It is endoscopic. Mm -hmm. If it is from a pseudoaneurysm, GDA, uh, which is usually delayed intraabdominal, it is angiographic embolization. And if it is early intraabdominal bleed or a bleed from the PJ site, which is severe, then it is surgical. <laughs> Unfortunately, bleed is associated with high mortality, except for this series from MSKCC, where they reported only 3% mortality. The series was small. Most other series have reported very high uh, mortality of post-PD bleed. This is not PD mortality. This is mortality of post-PD bleed. And we had reported that a combination of leak and bleed, we called it the dirty double, uh, I think there was a Hollywood movie by this name. Uh, so in our experience, patients who had a leak and a bleed, the mortality was very, very high. On the other hand, patients who did not have a leak or bleed, 
the mortality was as low as 3%. And same has been reported in another uh, series where they reported that if you have POPF and PPH, the mortality is as high as one out of three. Uh, statistically speaking, the commonest complication of PD is actually delayed gastric empty. And uh, although it's not dangerous, it's not fatal, but it can prolong the hospital stay, it can cause problems in uh, nutrition and may require intervention in the form of a placement of a nasojejunal tube. Uh, so uh, DG is uh, described to be more when you do PPPD and that is why PRPD came into being because the Japanese uh, groups which uh, innovated PRPD felt that if the pylorus is resected rather than uh, um, dilated or uh, divided, then the rates will be lower. If you do more extensive lymph node dissection, again, DG is more likely, although today nobody does these extended lymphadenectomies because they have been shown not to help in survival, although they increase the morbidity, including uh, uh, Kyle leak and uh, fluid and electrolyte imbalance. And the most important issue is that the commonest cause of DG is still a PJ leak and collection, especially a retrogastric or a retroduodenal collection in case of PPPD. So if a patient is showing features of DG leak, you should suspect a PJ leak and collection and probably should get a CT. You drain that collection and very likely that the DG will improve. But there are instances where in the absence of leak and in the absence of an obvious cause, there is a delayed gastric emptying, which has to be handled. Uh, there are the, the technique of uh, anastomosis, anticolic versus retrocolic, uh, Billroth 2 and Braun enteroenterostomy, several techniques have been described and used to decrease the incidence of delayed gastric emptying. There are reports for and against both. Prokinetics, especially erythromycin, uh, plays a role even in the preventive uh, uh, capacity. Uh, but I understand that the, the salt of erythromycin, which the Johns Hopkins group has described uh, to prevent DG is uh, not available with us. So we can't give it uh, uh, parenterally. And treatment, of course, is uh, total parental nutrition. But if you have a nasojejunal tube or a feeding jejunostomy, then there is no problem because you can continue with enteral nutrition. Uh, so uh, here we see a peripantriatic uh, collection and you can see a hugely dilated stomach with air, contrast and food level. Uh, I don't remember having re-operated on any patient for DG, although we have seen DG persisting for uh, more than a month and in one patient even more than uh, two months. A very uncommon and a very... Uh, uh, unrecognized. In fact, there is a very recent publication which uh, I came to know from Neha's presentation last week uh, that the ISGPS has now defined and uh, classified the uh, post-PD acute pancreatitis also. Basically, if you have an unsettled abdomen <coughs> and CT does not reveal any leak or collection, that is when you should think that whether it is post-PD acute pancreatitis. So here you see the pancreatic stump, there is no leak, and you see some uh, edema and uh, standing around the pancreas. Obviously, the serum amylase levels will be very high. The drain fluid amylase also will be high, but not uh, uh, um, much higher as we would see in a leak. Uh, treatment of uh, uh, post-PD acute pancreatitis is largely conservative because no intervention is required. Uh, so CT is basically done to rule out a leak and collection and to take care of that. So it is a diagnosis of exclusion. Another, uh, um, uh, I would call it a complication of PD is re-operation. Many patients with PD require re-operation either in the same hospital setting or even after discharge and reasons are different. And various series have reported a re-operation rate of three to 8% at SGPGI, our rate was slightly higher than this, but very frequently for various reasons, patients require re-operation. And that is a point which has to be kept in mind when we are counseling and taking consent for this operation. Mortality, as I said, of PD in some centers has been brought down to around one to 2%. In UK, in the NHS uh, cumulative experience, it still remains around 6%. Today, uh, the acceptable mortality of PD should be preferably less than 
this is the cumulative Indian experience, which was collected by Dr. Parul Shukla when he was at TMH. Now he's in uh, US. Seven centers contributed. The median number of patients per year was 34. Uh, uh, fistula rate was 12%, bleed was 6%, and the mortality in these seven centers was around 4%. Unfortunately, complications continue to occur during the follow-up of these patients also. They can develop an anastomotic ulcer at the, uh, especially at the GJ site. Uh, pancreatic fistula may persist. So leak, which has been drained by percutaneous catheter drainage may persist as a fistula, uh, but you have to just wait and uh, do nothing for these fistulae because post uh, uh, PD and post uh, necrosectomy pancreatic fistulae will invariably close without any intervention. You may have to wait for weeks. You may have to wait for months. In a patient with post necrosectomy fistula, I waited for one and a half years. The patient was insisting to operate, 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 but we waited and uh, the, the fistula closed after one and a half years. There are very few cases where we have gone in uh, and, and uh, tackle the fistula, and then the, the treatment would be a fistulogegenostomy as close to the origin of fistula as possible, because by this time, the fistula steric is mature. It is like a luminal structure, and you can very easily put a jejunal loop there. Uh, rarely, an astomotic stricture, especially at the PJ side, for some unknown reason, uh, HJ stricture is very unusual. This is one which I uh, saw when I was at SGPGI, and this lady uh, had a, actually a neuroendocrine um, uh, tumor and she had some excessive uh, fibrotic uh, tendency because she formed a very hypertrophic scar also. So probably she had some tendency towards increased fibrosis. We redid the HJ, she again restructured and we had to redo it again. Uh, but PJ stricture, uh, we have seen some cases, it presents like chronic pancreatitis and the treatment is if there is no recurrence of the disease that you go in and do uh, LPJ in the remaining body and tail of the pancreas. Functional complications because of pancreatic uh, uh, insufficiency, you have removed almost uh, half of the pancreatic parenchyma and the recent reports are suggesting a high incidence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in post-PD. So this is one area of uh, uh, research. There are very few reports, at least from India, if you have a good number of long-term survivors after PD, you should look into their uh, nutritional and uh, fatty liver status. And obviously, recurrence of the disease, which usually occurs in, or most commonly occurs in the first two years, but can occur even after five years and even 10 years, like in any other aggressive biology disease. So I think I would like to uh, conclude and leave some time for, for Ajay to make some comments and others. Uh, uh, students to ask questions. Uh, PD is a high morbidity procedure uh, world over. Uh, mortality has been controlled or decreased because of good salvage of complications, but morbidity still remains high because morbidity is something beyond us. That means whatever technique, whatever gadgets, whatever pre-operative measures we take, this is an operation which is associated with high rate of complications. And if we do not detect the complications and treat them properly, the mortality can be high. Even today, if you read uh, national C, uh, experiences, there are several centers, even in the Western uh, Europe and US, where mortality of PD is definitely more than 5% and still more than 10 or 20%. And therefore, more and more countries are uh, doing centralization so that a center does high volume which definitely brings down the mortality. Preparation of the patient is very important. Technique, of course, is of utmost importance. And uh, good intensive post-operative care with a very low threshold for suspicion and investigation of uh, complications. And then their salvage, uh, which is usually non-surgical, is very, very important. So if you want to read more, send me a mail bkkapoor.india at gmail.com. Just write PD complications in the subject of the mail. I will send you this review, which I had published uh, in one of the Polish uh, journals after I gave a lecture there. They asked me to publish in their journal. But at the same time, I'll send you another chapter uh, from a book, uh, which now I have published online on pancreatic or So I'll send you the chapter on complications 
uh, which gives little more details about complications of PD and uh, their management. Uh, so with that, I'll hand over to Ajay, who's uh, moderating my presentation today. It's a matter of uh, happiness, joy, and pride uh, that uh, one of your former fellows, who's now a, uh, established a uh, very senior, very competent uh, surgeon uh, in his own right, and uh, he's uh, moderating and chairing my presentation. Ajay, please. Thank you, sir. I would rather say it other way around. It's a, it's like a lifetime achievement award for you to moderate a session of your teacher who has guided you, who has taught you everything in uh, pancreatotectomy from P to Y. So uh, starting from P, when we were uh, the first year residents, as now we have residents, they will learn from the beginning of pancreas to now when they will mature and then start doing the things and then even they will consult when they have gone out and start practicing. That is what has happened with me with Dr. Kapoor, sir, and uh, from beginning till now. But now, yes, uh, it's a really privilege for me. Some important things, I think, some messages, some questions which uh, still persist. I would like uh, residents to keep on asking. But uh, in the meantime, when you know that, when you look into the data of pancreatic odontectomy, the most, almost all of them have reported a complication rate of 40, 41%, 45%, 39%, 46%. But if you see PJ leak, PJ leak will be 7%, 9%. Bleed, 4%, 8%, 10%. So you have to understand that the complication following a PD, the most important complication is the wound infection. It is almost so that you know 30-35% which has been reported, documented. So the major complication is the wound infection and second major complication is the collection around the pancreas which is forming an abscess. So these two major complications you have to always be aware because they will be occurring more commonly. Second thing is, um, this is my question to Dr. Kapoor sir, there, which we have discussed two days back that there is a high volume center. This can be a high volume surgeon and a high volume center. So uh, normally, if you see intraoperative technique, it will be a high volume surgeon. If you see uh, overall care of the patient in an institute, it is a high volume center. So uh, maybe that most of the data that we have is from the high volume centers, which have many surgeons operating among the patients and therefore the center becomes established. But surgeon wise, when a new surgeon starts, he is at a high volume center but he has to expertise in his technical skills. Sir, your comments on that, Dr. Kapoor. Yeah, so it depends on uh, when we say center, whether the center is following the concept of center also. Unfortunately, in our country, when we say an institution or a department or a unit, or a unit, uh, uh, even the uh, surgeons who are forming part of the uh, center or unit, uh, they are working as independent surgeons. There is no interaction amongst them. So that is not a center or a unit. If if the uh, if there are five surgeons in a uh, team, if there are five surgeons in a team, if they are not working as a team, if they are working as independent units, then we cannot call it a center or a unit experience. So when we see these reports from large volume centers in the West, uh, they they are working like a. We don't want to share the screen now. So. Uh, we don't want to share. Uh, can anyone respond? Are you able to hear us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. So uh, when we say center or a unit, it should be that everyone is because the the concept is that if everyone, uh, all the members of the team are working as a team, then only the whole team uh, gets used to <laughs> the technique, the protocols, and the practices. Uh, and uh, that is the difference. So when we see these reports from uh, uh, centers, either in Japan, Europe, or West, uh, they, they are really working like a unit. And that is why the experience. Uh... So I think that is a very important message to all uh, my junior colleagues that whenever you start your center, whenever you are in a center, when you're working in any place, actually you will have always one leader 
and others to follow his instructions that is the because he has his experience you have to learn from his experience and same thing will happen with the pancreatic jejunostomy technique technically when you are doing a surgical procedure so we we uh, follow a blomgard technique we uh, we have done you should know all the technique but definitely you should follow one technique that is the most important you may be knowing uh, how to do a invagination you might be knowing how to do other methods of ductum mucosa and anastomosis but one technique has to be followed and it's good that uh, if you your entire team is able to do that in the same way as you are doing it a second message for the uh, residents is that what you have to learn is if you have a bleeding on table from any of the sites say from a vein from a portal which is arising from the portal vein that is a bleeding which is happening now what you have to be more aware is what can cause a bleeding in the post operative period a bleeding happening now you will always control but when you are doing a dissection of the uncinate process you try to resect that area and without controlling a bleed and that is the area which will cause a immediate post operative bleed in 90% of the patients so something which is bleeding on table and something which is likely to bleed post op take care of that area which is likely to bleed in the post operative period uh, sir i think i would like to take your comments for the residents as well as for other that uh, using of energy sources for dividing bowel versus pancreas so i think your comments on that sir because you have specifically mentioned that yeah as i said that uh, there are different uh, points of view and different schools of thought on this on one extreme is a person like strasberg who says that pancreas should not be mobilized at all and it should be divided clean with a knife and then whatever is bleeding you control uh, with bipolar or fine suture so that you don't compromise the vascularity of the pancreas on the other hand we know that in laparoscopic surgery we have to per force use an energy source to divide the pancreas as far as mobilization is concerned as i mentioned i didn't go into those details i have actually requested to dr ribala pradeep who does uh, who has done actually a trial on pengs technique uh, to show us the pengs technique he is busy uh, for some personal reason but he has promised that as soon as he is free he is going to talk to us and show us how to do a pengs anastomosis i have never done it but in pengs technique as we all know one has to mobilize at least 3 cm of the pancreas you have to kind of lift it up from the retroperitoneum free it from everything and then you invaginate it into the uh, everted jejunum so these are extremes um, um, after we got harmonic at scpgi uh, we uh, started using it because we thought that the bleeding control is uh, good with it Uh, but as i mentioned when we neared the posterior surface and the superior border of the pancreas where we expect the duct to be there then we would stop using harmonic and that part of the pancreas we would divide with knife but i i have no objection to someone who says that i would like to divide it clean with a cold cut uh, knife and then control the bleed with whatever measures you have obviously that will be the least uh, damage to the vascularity of the pancreas uh sir uh, comment on that you, i remember in one of the conferences you were telling that when you use uh, harmonic for dividing the pancreas it forms a slightly firmer pancreas as compared to using pottery and this is what had made us use harmonic and i think we are very happy in our department using harmonic or the pottery so your maybe comment take on yeah I, i think this was a very subjective observation it may not be true also Uh, so i am not sure i don't know whether you have experienced the same thing yes, does it sir. does it change the consistency yes, of the pancreas it makes it makes the suture site more firmer yes. where you have to place the sutures so that is important uh, next thing about bleeding uh, there are there, there are two But ways why should it happen because basically dr chawbe sir why should it happen you know, you know the harmonic and pottery pottery they say that there is a lateral more lateral spread of the heat that is dissipated more laterally so there may be subsequent damage to the vessels and what you are saying that that's an experience that the once you divide by the pottery or harmonic harmonic they say that it is ultrasound basically the damage remains between the two blades it doesn't get dissipated that heat also is generated there also but it doesn't that is the 
so if we are dividing by harmonic it should be other way around but your experience is experience because uh, uh, as thing obviously that studies have not appeared but then uh, the theoretically it uh, uh, it doesn't stand to the uh, thing concept of uh, quartile and uh, harmonic okay let me let me it remain very subjective yeah, yeah, let, let me let me answer that yes uh, let, let's sir uh, actually uh, what i felt that what uh, sir used to say is slightly correct and i don't i was also in a lot much controversy into it and so i started using it huh. all those who have used harmonic huh. versus quartile when you are dividing the pancreas hmm. you apply it with a open blade huh. you can't crush the pancreas to apply the harmonic huh. now once it is a open blade there is a ultrasonic wave which is working on this and this ultrasonic wave goes around it it will not coagulate the it will not coagulate the vessels but there will be ultrasonic wave which yeah so they so can form time. the pancreas form this anybody i I'll, i'll take a video next time and i'll show this that when you are doing it with a harmonic it definitely makes a difference in the pancreas visual difference obvious and once you put the needle you will be experiencing yeah, it as well so if you have noticed this difference one has to accept it yes because, because he has a tremendous amount of experience of doing pd and when he says and the explanation now what explanation he has given basically when uh, you uh, see whenever you are applying harmonic because the, all those energy sources came for dividing the vessels so you crush them and then in between uh, that gets uh, uh, say okay i'll come just rapidly now but bleed for a bleed uh, dr adarsh chaudhary uh, but he is a big name in india for for pd and he does he ligates every vessel that comes in the way even a 2 mm vessel we use energy sources because i think both ways are correct but be cautious that harmonic and ligature have different sizes of the vessels to take control don't depend upon one or the other so you need to have a control that a larger size vessel should be done by ligature rather than by harmonic then there was a there was a point on new adjuvant uh, chemo radio therapy definitely radiation therapy is less commonly used for pancreas but for a new adjuvant therapy for the residents a important message is following any patients with a new adjuvant therapy you should give a time gap for the vascular endothelitis to end following a chemotherapy which varies from different chemotherapies normally we what we have standardized it is at 40 days but some with the newer therapies it can be done after 15 to 20 days so you have to understand that you should not use any surgical procedure within within 30 to 40 it is likely to bleed the major complication is bleed following this and most important is the post operative bleed so timing is important in this in, in this just my logic is that at least that much of time should must be given for surgery as it will it will uh, uh, between two cycles Yes. You yes. cannot reduce. Ah, did you leave the group by mistake or uh, did you actually, actually leave? Uh, it should not be reduced. Surgery should not be done before that time gap between two cycles of chemotherapy. Why? Right. Uh, there was another thing which was a, a, a article published in JAX 2014, brain fluid amylase on day one. Yeah. So I would say that <laughs> uh, we have a slightly controversial experience that. On day one, drain fluid amylase. Yeah, I was listening to the class. Yeah, there was a high. class going Second on. Second day, the drain output was was almost nil. So it has no relevance. And day day one, drain fluid amylase. If it is high, if it is low, oh and God, you have a day three drain fluid much. amylase which is high. So always it is the day three drain fluid amylase that was only more important. So we have stopped doing it in our institute. It is as a practice that we don't do it because but we it, found that it is. You are right, but the definition wise, it is day three. But what Professor Kapoor said, the books still mention yes. that the first day they will analyze gives you some indication. If it is very high, then it is likely to uh, that, uh, yeah. that implies that you have done a goof up with the anastomosis. Yeah, <laughs> because you're technically yeah. it is wrong. The message from that article is other way. Yeah, if on day one it is low, then it is unlikely. Unlikely. Is yes. Yeah. Okay. It is very unlikely. Next thing was revision surgery for a leak. so the important message as dr kapoor has said revision surgery for any abscess any leak take word very cautiously you can write it down it is not the revision of anastomosis write it down it is not a revision of anastomosis it is revision of the surgery b 
be cautious and gentle i have been called so many times by general surgeons who have done a pd and having a complication they have dismantled the anastomosis and doing it again please take care that this is a wrong method any bleed following a pd beyond day 3 before day 3 it may be just a immediate post operative bleed beyond day 3 this is dr sadik's dictum i very very often quote, quote my teacher again and again on table that always take it as a sentinel bleed even if it is small bleed be cautious this in sir has shown in 33% patients maybe slightly more also that if there is a bleed it is likely to have a major bleed always it is a uh, sentinel bleed so one more bleeding for uh, which we do a blumgard technique in which we place trans pancreatic sutures mm -hmm. that i uh, i wanted to uh, mention at some point in time but now since we have reduced bleeding in that once you place a suture through the pancreas with a slate needle from anterior border to posterior border pancreas you don't know where is the intra pancreatic vessel going it is not under observation we have had a patient who had a bleed from the suture line with a retroperitoneal hematoma and then subsequently we have realized that some many of these patients had a drop in hemoglobin so just be cautious when you are doing a uh, classical blumgar technique with a straight needle in that i would say that when you are putting these trans pancreatic sutures if you see a drop of blood either on the anterior posterior surface at the same time because you have still not done the anastomosis compress the pancreas between your finger and thumb for an adequate time because that intra parenchymal if you caused an injury to a intra pancreatic vessel at least uh, some control will be there so it just when the needle is inside what professor kapoor is saying and you notice there is some blood and dearly if can we let the needle be there and cut right no yeah, yeah just i'm asking <laughs> yeah, yeah sir it is a very good idea but i don't know whether i would be i would be hesitant to do that because it will be a whole a larger bigger hole in the pancreas <laughs> so next thing is uh, a large duct anastomosis is always easy does not need a stent small duct anastomosis is always difficult and difficult to place a stent so uh, recently we did a patient in which it was the duct was so small that we could see it sometimes but we could not see it sometimes it was so small duct and we had resorted to uh, something like porto entrostomy which we have done it earlier also and it has worked well so this is one of the techniques which has not yet been i have not seen it on the data till now in uh, so i think this is one we one has to look into ha uh, one more thing uh, uh, patient having a bleed sir i think that's the uh, safe uh, which i'll read from your side a patient having no leak but a bleed what is your example i have never found a patient who has had no leak or no abscess no abscess uh, sepsis but he is having a bleed it is very unlikely early early can in that it always meant They they will occur without bleed. Uh, that is not related to your. Uh, but, but, yeah, yeah, that is related to your surgical uh, procedure. So uh, the the classical day three day four bleed, uh, the GDA bleed. It can it can happen because if the, now mo most of us are using energy sources more and more. So if you use an energy source on the surface of an artery, it can cause partial mm -hmm. damage to the wall, right. and that can cause a pseudo like post uh, lap coli pseudo aneurysm. Isn't mm -hmm. it? So same way, post PD pseudo aneurysm can form, and it can bleed even without a leak because of more frequent uh, use of energy sources on the surface of the vessel. Take this message. It's a very experienced surgeon telling you this message. For an artery, be cautious of using a uh, energy yeah. source. In fact, I I would cite one case, uh, and I still remember Dr. Biju. Uh, I think we are all. beyond time so maybe you yes. carry on <laughs> thanks yes yes i'll just take two more minutes now uh, delayed gastric emptying there was a mention that uh, prpd versus pppd it was initially started for that but over a period of time there have been number of metanalysis which have shown that there is no difference in that and dge usually if it is having it will have some collection it will very rarely happen that it is not having any cause if it is not having any cause take my words it is usually a lymph node sitting at the celiac trunk it is usually advanced disease that is causing this so these patients will have a poor prognosis but uh, anticolic versus retrocolic gj we have found that it is very important that when you do it though there the data does not support it because the data has seen has had a date collection from only the patient which do not have leak but once you have a leak from a pj anastomosis 
always a retrocolic anastomosis with a with the gastrogenostomy in the infracolic compartment which is away from the pancreas is always helpful this is specifically also for the patients who have post uh, pd pancreatitis as well as for the leak that the getting it into the infracolic compartment is helpful isoperistaltic retroperistalsis has been shown to be of no benefit i think non alcoholic fatty liver disease we have to look into it because this is a something new which i have come uh, to to understand steatorrhea is a very known very well known factor there is a lot of work which is going on iron vitamin b12 deficiency chronic anemias in this patient duodenum being lost so nutritional deficiencies in this group i think that is one data i think biju is looking into this matter presently and i think we should also uh, look into this matter i had collected something on 250 to 70 patient in which we did it but we could not follow it uh, in our government center when i was earlier but that needs to be looked into i think thanks to dr, to dr. kapoor who has given a, a excellent presentation i think few things which you should always learn from your teacher one thing how to write your slide i think every resident if you have seen this slide less words written more spoken second what do you want to highlight that only has to be colored it should not be made colored to make your distracting sentence uh, presentation into it third thing everything should be written into the center of the screen something at the corner of the screen is not that important whatever you have written whatever reference you have if it is mentioned that will always be helpful for all the students fifth thing don't go away from your topic what happens to us is once we start from history we spend half an hour for history so you learn from your teacher he is one of the best speakers in the country so you should learn from him how he has made a presentation and how he has presented it i would request dr kapoor to take one session for the all jst members how to make a slide how to make a presentation that will be very important for us thank you sir thanks for that thank you ajay for moderating and for your comments anybody else ऑलरे because this is a fistula in a now normal gland and there is no underlying disease so this these fistulae usually close so you should not be in a rush to go in to close uh, or to take care of these fistulae if at all you go in then an option is a fistulo jejunostomy so you use the fistula strap put a loop of jejunum there the sutures hold very well and that would be the answer but Uh, i don't think i yeah, have we operated on a post pd uh, external pancreatic fistula post necrosecme two or three cases i remember uh, one or two cases were done when dr sadik was there and then after that uh, but most of these patients the fistula will close it is only a matter of time so i think we've already overshot the time so uh, we will close uh, and uh, i will thank uh, ajay and avinash for his uh, technical support once again Okay, we will close the session.